Hello guys, I'm Svetlin Naku from Softuni, the software university. I'm your Java coding instructor and my goal is to teach you to program in Java and start a tech job. As a first step, I teach this series of free Java coding basics video lessons with hands-on practical coding exercises to give you the basic skills of coding, algorithmic thinking and problem solving. Later, I continue with few more advanced training courses which extend your job programming skills with data structures, object-oriented programming and basic Java APIs. Today, I continue my coding Java basics tutorial for absolute beginners. And if you have missed the previous part, parts of this tutorial, please review them first to catch up. In this lesson, I will talk about advanced whoops and how to write more complex program logic, which requires nesting of whoops, which is basically to put a whoop inside another whoop or to put several whoops inside each other's. I will start with implementing whoops with a step and whoops which go through a nonlinear sequence, such as the powers of two. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, etc. Then I will explain how to use nested whoops and the variants of these nested whoops. For example, for whoop inside a for whoop, while whoop inside a while whoop, uh, while whoop inside a for whoop, for whoop inside a while whoop, etc. I will demonstrate the power of nested whoops by many examples and live coding exercises, such as, for example, printing a square of numbers, printing a rectangle of letters or a triangle of stars with variable size, which comes from the user input. At the end of the lesson, we'll solve some hands-on exercises and I will submit the solutions to the soft unit church for immediate grading to show you how you can test your code when you solve your coding exercises. But exercises are important. Don't skip these coding exercises. They give you practical skills and experience. To learn coding, you should write code. You should solve coding exercises, write code, run the code, find bugs, fix the bugs, run the code again, find other bugs, fix the other bugs, and so on, until you reach a state at which your code works correctly. And this is how developers work their profession. By practice, 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 practice. So, do your exercises. This is how you learn skills. Okay, now it's time to start with the lesson. Let's start with this more complex whoops. So complex whoops are four whoops which may have a different steps or might have some kind of more strange or unusual logic which goes from one whoop step to another to the next whoop step. This is a traditional uh, backwards uh, whoop. It starts from N down to one. It starts from uh, variable i starts from n, for example, 100. It repeats while i is bigger than 1 and it decrements the uh, variable i after each step. This is another example where the step is 2. This is another example where the step is the previous uh, value multiplied by 2. So here the values of k will be the values of k will start from 1, then 2, then 4, then 8, then 16, then 32, uh, until it reaches or uh, re until it, re it reaches n or something bigger than n. Okay, and another example is something which divides a number n uh, continuously. It, this is an integer division. Uh, while it's positive. So, for example, if we start from n25, the next iteration will be 12, the next iteration will be 6, the next iteration will be 3, the next iteration will be uh, 1, and the next iteration will reach 0, and the uh, loop will, will exit at this situation. So, this is another way to use a step, a special kind of step calculation process like this formula in order to achieve more complex loop logic. 
uh, usually the last one might be used to find the number of bits in certain number or number of uh, to to find the to to convert a number to a binary form or something like this. Okay, so let's see uh, one example as given as a problem and solution. We want to print the numbers from n down to 1. We read an integer and we print the numbers from n to 1 at a single line. So if we if the input is 100, it should print 100, 99, 98, etc. until 1. If the input is 10, uh, then it will print the numbers 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, uh, so how we can solve this? Let's start IntelliJ IDEA. Yes, we still don't have it. It might take some time because it's very good tool for um, writing Java code and Java projects, but it's a kind of slow because my computer is good enough uh, it's very powerful with uh, 16 gigabytes of uh, RAM, with SSD disk, with uh, four uh, threads uh, and eight, four CPUs and eight threads, etc., etc., etc. But IntelliJ IDEA is very heavy uh, software, so I usually start it preliminary before the lesson, but I. I uh, forgot to do this before the start. So once it will load, I will create first a project for this. It will be nested. It will be called nested loops. And I will put all my code from today in this project because it is better for organizing my uh, projects into a well-named uh, different projects, one corresponding to each lesson we have later we will uh, upload all of this in github and this will become part of our developer portfolio so i will create this is from the while loops the previous lesson i will create a new project which will be called something like uh, it will be common to end up something like nested whoops java it's good enough. This will be the nested loops from the Java lesson. Uh, be sure to have this package as empty because otherwise it will make your job a little bit more complex, but it will still run to a certain extent. Uh, I will open this window and now I'm ready to write the code here in the source folder in this main.java class. Uh, in this file and I'll put my logic here. So my logic will be about the printing the numbers from n down to 1. So I'll create a new class called numbers n down to 1. It should be without hyphens and others because this is a class name. I cannot use hyphens, I cannot use spaces here. Uh, because this will result in error. Okay, this is my class. I'll put main and we'll create, uh, press control space uh, to use this template to simplify my work. And I will uh, define a scanner, scanner, uh, scanner is equals to control space, scanner, it will be new scanner of system dot in okay and then i will say something like in and equals to scanner dot read the next integer now i have the n and i need to organize the four i will use for i which will start from n while uh, i is bigger or equal than one and the whoop iteration step will be i minus minus so now i can print i the whoop variable let's try to start this and see what will happen uh, i will 
enter, for example, as input uh, 10, and it should print the numbers from 10 to 1 each at a separate one. Looks like, like it works correctly. 10 until 1. So I'm done with this problem. And the important uh, logic here is how to start from n. I bigger than or equal 1, I minus minus. This is a down 2 and to 1 for loop. Okay, this is solu the solution I had in mind before the start of this uh, lesson, but uh, it, it is the reverse condition and incremental I minus minus in the loop. And in the loop body, ah, we need to print at uh, the, uh, the same line. I'm sorry. So I will print the number and I will print also uh, a comma and space. So let's see what will happen. And finally, I need to print the, a new line at the end. But see, if I press 10, it will be 10 to 1. But finally, if i is bigger than 1, I, I need to put the comma. So I will say something like if i is bigger than 1, if, if it's not the last number, I will pr print a comma after that. Okay, so let's see what will happen now. If I press enter, for example, 20 as input, the numbers from 20 to 1 inclusively are printed here. So we remove the trailing comma here, which is uh, at the last uh, loop iteration. Okay, so we are ready. Uh, here the logic is the opposite. We first print the comma and then the next number. Or either we first print the next number and then the comma. So if we first print the comma, we'll need the comma in all cases, uh, except the starting position. If we print the comma after the number, we will need to print it in all cases, except at the last position. So the if here will be different, slightly different, but the logic is very, very similar. So I hope you can manage to write the similar code yourself. Uh, and I highly recommend that you write code every day. You need to write hundreds of lines, even thousands of lines of code every day for at least one year in order to become a junior uh, candidate developer. Okay, let's go ahead with the next problem. The next problem is very similar. It's about writing a program to print the numbers from 1 to n, but with step 3. This is the example. 1, 4, 7, 10, if the input is 10. If the input is 7, 1, 4, 7. If the input is 14, is the output is 1, 4, 7, 10, 13. Numbers 1 to n, step 3. I will copy this. I will say copy and I will say, I will go here at the source and I will say paste. And the, and the IntelliJ idea will ask me for a class name. So I will pre enter numbers uh, 1 to and step three, because this is what I have. I print the numbers from one to n using a step of three. And I have a copy of this. So the only thing I need to change is the whoop. It starts from one. It ends if we reach n inclusively. And I have i plus equals three. And uh, I will print the comma only if i is bigger than 1 after the first step. But after, uh, yes, I will print the comma before the number, but in all steps before the first. So here I will not have comma, but here I will have after the, the 1. Okay, so let's check whether this works or not. If we have, for example, 7, 1 for 7 works correctly. If we have 20, 1 for 7, 10, 13, 60, 
19. If we have minus 5, the output will be empty, which is absolutely correct. Okay, so we are ready with this problem solution also. And let's check what I had in mind before the start of this lesson. I had in mind this, I start, I read N, then I make a whoop from 1 until N with the step of 3. Very similar to what I have written already. And if it is not the first step, I print a comma, then I print the number I, and finally I go at the next one because I want to print the output on a single one and go the next one. This is the normal process in console-based applications. Okay, so we are ready for the next problem. It's called even powers of two. It's about writing a program to print the powers of two which are even. So we read the number n and we print the even powers of two up to two at the power of n. So these are the numbers. 2 at the power of 0, 2 at the power of 2, 2 at the power of 4, 2 at the power of uh, 8, until 2 of the power of n. So these are the numbers 1, 4, 16, 64, etc. Until 2 at the power of n. Okay? Let's see an example. If we have 10, the numbers will be, will be from 1 to 124. So this looks like a whoop, but the formula to get from one value to the next value is that the next value is four, time big, four times bigger than the previous one. So this one here, uh, sorry, this one here, is four times of the previous one here. This is the formula. And we can organize a traditional for loop, but we'll not have i++, we'll have i multiplied equals four. For example, if we have seven, in this another example, we'll have the numbers from one to 64. Okay, even powers of two. To solve this problem, I'll create a new class called even powers of 2 and I will put a main method here. I'll press Control tab to go at the previous uh, class and copy these two lines of code because I, I don't want to type them again. And now I have n, so I will say something like uh, p uh, wong I will use wong because uh, 2 raised to some power is uh, increasing very fast so it might overflow in, in just a few steps uh, I'll show you so we have wong p it starts from 1 because 2 to the power of 0 is 1 okay so I will start from uh, p equals 1 oh I will don't, don't need this I'm sorry uh, until I reach this No, no, I will need to print all the numbers less than or equal n. I think I will not use uh, 2 to the power of n. I read the number n. Okay. So I will need to repeat this n times okay so i'll have for i uh, from 1 to n and i'll have i plus plus i plus plus and i'll have 
print p and p equals p multiplied by 2 by 2 or by 4 which is the same uh, and if it is 1 if we if if p is 2 at the power of 0 the next the next p will be p multiplied uh, at the uh, the at this power 2 10 10 2 at the power of 4 10 to the power of 6 etc so this is the formula and I will repeat keys n times okay so let's check whether this works correctly or not. I'll run this and if I have 10, it's 1, 4, 16, but it should stop at 1 at the power of 10. But here I have a step of 2. So here I will need to have a step of 2. Why? Because I multiply by 2 and then again I multiply by 2. So I, I obtain 2 to the power of 1, then 2 to the power of, okay, it's from 0, 2 to the power of 0, then 2, then 4, then 6, etc. So I will need to have a step of 2 here. The, the step is 2 and until I reach n. Let me check again. If I have 10, okay, I need to have 10 and inclusively. If I have 10, it will print the numbers from 1 to 124. If I have 7, it should be until 64. Works correctly. So I believe we are ready with this problem. Ah, I wanted to show you what will happen if we have big uh, pow power. It's something like 2 raised to the power of 50. I think this is not big enough, but if I have 1000, see what happens. It works correctly until it overflows. Here, the next num this number is incorrect and this is also incorrect. Here we have overflow and until this number all the values are correct if we want to solve this we may use the big okay i can show you because this is interesting instead of uh, of p wong i can use big integer is new big integer of one uh, okay, let's see how I can use this big integer dot one or dot value of one, and then I should say p equals to p dot multiply by four. dot multiply of big integer dot value of 4 let me see whether this works or not if I have 10 it works correctly if I have 1000 it still works correctly you can check, see?
why this works correctly because this class big integer holds integer values uh, with unlimited number of digits so it might be used for cryptography purposes or other mathematical or physical calculations where we need very big numbers so this is the output here this is just a small trick you don't need to know it at this stage of your um, development as a software engineer but uh, in many languages we have such classes which allow us to use more uh, accurate uh, integers because the int, long, float, double and others are limited to a certain number of digits. Okay, let's go ahead. This is the um, solution I had in mind before the start of the lesson. I start from num1, which is 2 raised to the power of 0. Uh, I run the loop from 0 to n with step 2 because at each step we uh, multiply the num by 2 and then again by 2 and uh, we use this trick to use the comma and the solution is very similar like this so I can even fix this print p and then it, if p is bigger than if i is bigger than 0 then I will print also a comma and now if I need to print the numbers from 1 to 30 2 to the power of uh, even powers uh, this is the output okay let's go ahead with the next concept it's called do while loops. The do while loop is something like the while loop, but the exit condition is at the end. See this example. It says, start a loop, please repeat this, and finally check this condition. If it is true, repeat the loop body again. If it is false, just exit the loop. Very similar to the while loop, but at the while loop, we have the wood body uh, executed zero or more times and here we have the wood body executed at least once. So while loop uses an exit condition at the start and do while loops use an exit condition at the end. So it's a while uses an entrance condition, loop condition and this uses a post loop condition post loop exit condition okay so but the logic is very very uh, simple i will demonstrate this to you so here i can start from int num s1 to uh, print the number oh num equals to one print the number number is multiplied by two and while the number is less than or equal 124 for example so what will be the input it will be 1 2 4 8 etc until 224 but this will be always executed at least one because there is not check at the start of the loop there there is a check at the end of the loop. So this is the do while loop in programming. It's the same in many programming languages like C++, C, C Sharp, JavaScript and others. Okay, let's go ahead with the main topic for today. The main topic for today is about nesting loops. Nesting one, one loop inside another loop. Let's start from a real world example. Imagine how the digital clock works or the or other digital screens. It works as a sequence of iterations. So assume this is the clock or this is the uh, car fuel indicator or uh, some kind of measurement. Uh, if one second passes, 
this will increase the rightmost digit. After one more second, it will increase the rightmost digit. After this will repeat at each second, for example, once it reaches nine, it works as the previous iteration, just increase the rightmost digit. But when the rightmost digit is increased and reaches 10, it becomes zero and the left digits from it, from it it's increased. So uh, we'll have this from 0009, we'll have 001010. So this is a nested loop. Why? Well, because we have this running from 1 until 9. Then, when this reaches 9, this runs from 0 until 9. Uh, this also works from, sorry, from 0. Okay? Then, when these two loops are complete, this will run from 0 to 9 and this will become uh, here will have 1 and this will be 0 so we have whoop inside the whoop it will be something like uh, this one will have sorry oh <laughs> boo color uh, 1 2 3 4 until 9 okay and we have one at the start because okay let's again uh, we have zero at the start followed by one two three until nine then we'll have one of the start followed by one two three until nine then we'll have two at the start followed by uh, sorry, 0 to 9. It should start from 0 here also. It's my mistake. And this continues until this reaches 9 followed by the numbers from 0 to 9. So, this is a whoop. It's from 0 to 9. But this is another whoop from 0 to 9. So, we have whoop inside a whoop. And here we might have the third digit which also starts from 0 to 9 etc 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 so the concept here is that we in order to run this we might need four loops one inside another and i will show you in practice how to implement this in java okay so nested loops by concept are whoops staying one inside another. Whoop inside a whoop. This is a nested whoop. Okay, so we can nest whoops inside other whoops. So if we have something which runs from the first row to row number n, in this situation n is 3, 1, 2, 3. If we have, for example, a building and it has for uh, uh, one, then it has for two, and then it has for three. This is from one to three, a whoop. Inside, we may have even whoop, which runs through the uh, locations or columns inside these rows so we can print the column from 1 to n and we use uh, our, an inner whoop so usually in the whoop body we can put anything right some logic some variables why not putting another whoop so Nested loops are loops which execute some programming logic which also holds a loop. So 
A typical example is to iterate from the first to the last row, for example, in the cinema hall, and then to iterate from the first to the last count. And currently we just print stars like this, and the outputs is something like this. So we'll have an iteration one, two, uh, row one, row two, row three, and for each one we'll have one, column one, two, three. For the second row we'll have column one, two, three, and for the third row we'll have column one, two, three. Okay, let's see this in action. So I'll clear this code to write the loop for i. Uh, this will be row, it's from 0 to 5, for an example, or from 1 to 5 inclusively. So we can uh, write something like row equals plus row. This is a normal loop, it will print the numbers from 1 to 5 here. Okay. But instead of printing these numbers here, what will happen if we print uh, the counts from the numbers 1 to 5 here? We can either print here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. Let's see. Or we can use replace this with a whoop for column start from 1 to 5 and we print space plus column. It's the same, but now it's with a nested whoop. So we have whoop which repeats. Uh, okay, after that we'll need a new line. We have a loop which repeats five time, times, and inside it, we print the numbers from one to five. So, first time, second, third, fourth, fifth. At each row, we execute this. So, I can also print uh, something like uh, row plus row plus column to see what happens. We'll have row 1, the numbers from 1 to 5. Row 2, the numbers from 1 to 5. Row 3, from numbers 1 to 5. We can replace this 5 by n. And now we can have int n is 5. This will be the same logic here. Okay. But we can change this with 4. And now we'll have 4 rows and 4 columns in each row. Okay? And instead of this, we can print, instead of call, we can print an asterisk here. And we'll print a square of n by n stars. Okay? This. I can command this and it will be the, the square from the example of the previous slide. This one. If n is 3, this is something like this. So this is how whoops work. Inside the whoop we may have other whoop, which is obvious. We didn't need to teach you that this is possible because we already explained that inside a whoop we can pay, put any block of code which may also hold a whoop. So let's go ahead uh, with some more concepts. Nested whoops are several whoops placed one inside another. And nested whoops are used to execute multiple times certain action which itself executes multiple actions. So, for example, we may need to build a building holding n five floors, and at each floor we may need to build five rooms. So we need for the first floor 
one, two, three, four, five rooms. For the second floor, one, two, three, four, five rooms. For the third floor, one, two, three, four, five rooms. So these are actions built a floor, which consist of several other actions built a room. Okay, so we sometimes need to implement more complex calculations and program logic, and we may need nested loops. Usually, when we have a table holding rows and columns, we need nested loops. This is a very common indication. If we need a tabular data, tables, we need nested loops. If we have uh, cubic data, something like this, this, and this, building of three floors, each holding many uh, rooms uh, at several, how to say, if we have multiple tables, in fact, we may need three nested loops. Uh, so I'll show you this in practice. But generally, nested loops are loops inside loops. A typical situation to have rows holding columns. We have multiple rows and each row holds multiple columns. Let's see this example. In this example, we have floor from 1 to n, we have row from 1 to n, and we have column from 1 to n. We have, uh, for example, assume we have a cinema consisting of three floors. At each floor, we have uh, a cinema WAP, a cinema hall, where we have n by n rows and columns. So let's see this, I'll show you. Uh, we may have a for loop which whoops the floor number from 1 to n. Inside it, we may have another whoop which whoops the row number from 1 to n. And finally, we may have a, another whoop which whoops the column, changes the column consequently from 1 to n. And finally, inside the whoop body, we may print uh, the floor number plus a space plus the row number plus a space was the column number. Let's see how this works for n3. Okay. First floor, first row, first column. First floor, first row, last column. So if we have n4 and each loop is from 0 to 9, from 0 to 9, we'll have something sim very similar to our example before. Did you remember uh, the example? Let's go back. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7. If it reaches 9, the next is 10. Then 11, 12, etc. It's a counter. Okay? If we reach zero, it increases the previous. So this is how nested loops work in action. You need to have just some practice. By theory, they are nothing complex, but when you practice, you need to just think uh, in the terms of nested loops. Okay, so remember to have to use different variable names. Sometimes people uh, are trying to copy, copy this, copy and paste this, and see what happens. This variable is already defined. So the nested loop cannot have the same loop variable like the it outer loop. This inf 
in by the way this is called inner loop and this is called outer loop but this loop here is inner this loop here is inner regarding this one so if we have just two loops like this we have inner this is the inner loop and we have outer loop which is obvious let's go ahead with some examples of how to nest for loops inside other for loops I will start with the concept. The concept is that we have for loop which holds initialization, condition, loop condition, and increment formula. The outer loop, the inner loop holds the same. And inside this nested loops, we have some comments, some statements, which are located here. Okay. We may have some comments. here as well which are part of this out of the body of the outer loop okay let's see this in practice we want to print a table consisting of three rows each holding two columns so we iterate uh, for the variable r from one until the number of rows so it will iterate like this one two three inside it i want for one to have the numbers here from one until two for two i want to have the numbers one and two and for three, I want to have again the numbers one and two, because I want to have three rows, each holding one column, uh, two columns, okay? So here I will print the row number, and then this will print something like this. Then I will iterate from one to the number of columns and we'll print the columns with a leading space here and this will print this the inner loop here will produce this the outer loop here will produce this at the next iteration what will happen this will be r will be now two and the second row will be printed in the second row we need to print the columns one and two they will be printed at the next iteration here the next row number three will be printed and for inside it this loop will print columns one and column two so this is how this works this is a very good example of nested logic and you can see it many times. For example, if we have a hotel, we have a uh, few floors, for example, five floors. And in each floor, we have, for example, 20 rooms. At the first floor, we have 20 rooms. At the second floor, we have 20 rooms. At the third floor, we have 20 rooms. If you want to clean all the rooms in the hotel, we need to repeat for each floor, please, for each room, clean the room. We need to go to the first floor, clean the rooms one by one, go to the second floor, clean the rooms one by one, go to the third floor, clean the rooms one by one. So this is a very good real world example of nested for loops. And this is an extremely good explanation of how to use this and why they are needed and how to code these nested loops in Java. Okay, let's solve 
our first problem uh, using nested loops for today. It's about writing a program to print a triangle of stars, just like shown below. If the size is 5, we print 1 star, 2 stars, etc. until 5 is reached. First one, second, third, fourth and fifth. So we need to have a loop from 1 to 5 and for each row we need to print a, num a stars corresponding to this row number. For example, at row 5 we need to print 5 stars. If the input is 7, if this size is 7, the output should be this one. 1 star, 2 star, until 7 stars. So, let's solve this problem. Triangle of stars. We go in IntelliJ IDEA. I will delete this because it's, it cannot compile. Uh, I will create a new class. Triangle of stars. Stars. Okay. I'll have the main method. I'll copy these two lines because I don't want to write them again. It will take time. So I'll start from I need the for I template. I'll start from one until I reach N I plus plus. So I need to print I I stars run for example if we have five here I need to print one star two stars until five how do we print five stars I stars how do we print this number of stars we make a whoop I can change this variable. Control R R. No. Shift F six. Yes. Stars count. Or it might be one. And the first one, second one, third one. I print one stars. And here I'll need for I. I'll start from one to one one times I repeat printing a star followed by space and after that I'll print a new line let's see whether this works or not this prints five stars and this goes on the next one because uh, after we print one star we need to go there Oh, we don't need the spaces. Okay. But it's exactly the same thing. Just the output will be slightly different. For input 7, I will have 1 star, 2 stars, 3 stars, etc. We can trace this through the debugger. Debug. And you will see what will happen. Now... The one is one. Hey, please stop here. Okay. Debugger. F8. F8. Looks like something is broken. Oh, I needed to enter N. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I need to debug it again. Uh, I just needed to enter this 5 for example. So we have F8. Now wine is 1. And we print 1 star. And this loop ends. Now wine is 2. We need to print 1 star. Then 1 more star. And then we print this. At the third one. We will repeat this three times. Three stars are printed. We got the next one. At the next one, 
fourth we need to print one two three four times a star then a new one and at the final one five we print one two three four five stars then we go to the next one and now this loop stops and the program is done it also stops so this is how this works through the debugger generally exactly what we might need to expect might want to expect okay so this is the solution i had in mind before the start of the lesson i iterate from one i enter the size and, uh, and i change the row from one to size from example from one to five and at each row i iterate the count from one to row it's not from one to n but it's from one to the previous one so this serves as and uh, end value for the internal or nested loop and after i have printed all the starts for for the current one i go to the next one because otherwise all the stars will be printed at a single one it will be just a sequence of stars so let's say a few words about nested while loops it's very similar like we can have for loop inside another for loop we may have a while loop inside another while loop this is how it works as a con concept we have outer loop while something is true please repeat inside while something different is some other condition is true repeat and we execute here some statements we may also here execute some statements and before the loop here and here we may have also some statements so we have we may have statements wow loop then other statements here we may have also something then another wow loop then another thing so we can nest uh wow loops everywhere where we can have a statement for example is inside if inside for inside wow let's see an example we want to print rows we have row number changing from one until two and we print it then we have a nested loop which changes the column from one to three and we print the column number so for the first one we have an inner loop which prints columns one two three intentionally we have a space here in order to uh, visually demonstrate that this thing is inside the outer loop row then we increase the row number and now the row number and after that the loop repeats now the row number is two it will be printed and this code will loop from one to three and will print column one column two column three it is very similar with what we achieved with nested for loops but this is done with while loops i just wanted to show you that we can put one while loop inside another while loop let's solve the previous problem triangle of stars but it's the same problem but using while loops okay i will copy this triangle of stars control c control v wow loop for example this will be the name triangle of stars wow okay so i read the input and i say int one starts from one wow one is not reached 
or is not is within the range of n if the y is 1 2 3 4 it's not exceeded n I will print print one stars let's see this iterate oh five and now I don't increase this one IntelliJ idea says oh you don't change this inside the loop you might fall into infinite loop I may I noticed this but I wanted to show this to you so one plus plus will be needed at the end of this loop okay now I want to have five lines at the first one I want to print one star at the second I want to print two stars at the third I want to print three stars etc 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 so I need to change this with something different which will be uh, let stars uh, not let <laughs> in stars is one while stars is bigger than zero I will print a star then stars minus minus I want to print this amount of stars here so I start from this I print a star and decrease the number later I print I go to the next one now let's see whether this works or not five oh it doesn't work from one why two three four five six while is bigger than zero I will print it okay five one two three four five works absolutely correct see if we forget to go the next one we print one star then we print two stars three stars four stars and five stars and if we forget to go the next one the output will be this all the stars stay on the same line so please don't forget finally our complete solution is this code we start from one line when one then we go to one two one three until we reach one n and we print one number of stars of the first one one number of stars of the second one etc and we increase these are nested while loops while loop staying in the body of another while loop if we think of this while loop as a black box so we don't know what's inside we can construct this outside loop separately then construct this logic separately just like it is here for example not here but just like it is something separate and then we can combine them together so this is how it works I believe once you get some more experience it will be easy for you to work with nested loops. It's not important whether these are for loops, while loops or other loops. It's the same concept. This is an example. We read a variable called height, which means how many rows we have. We start from row 1 until row height. One, row 1, 2, 3, 4, 
we start from colon zero and we have this oh this is something uh, interesting i may have wow star minus minus is bigger than zero then print this which is slightly less cold so i decrease the number of stars and if they are bigger than zero i print asterisk but i'm not sure this is correct let's check five one two three four five okay so i decrement here in the while loop and then compare whether this is bigger or not it might be like this also but the previous one looks better for me more readable and more understandable so this is the solution which I had in mind before the start of this lesson. Of course, we may have for loop here. Of course, we may have for loop here as well, because we know in advance how many times we will repeat this block of code. But in this example, I want to demonstrate how to use nested while loops. That's why I solved this problem like this. Okay, let's show how we can nest while wow and for whoops, depending on what is more convenient in the current situation. So we can have a for inside a while, we can have a while whoop inside for whoop, or we may have while whoop inside two nested for whoops. Let's see this. We want to print, uh, to implement a sum of digits calculator. This program reads integers until n is entered. So it reads, for example, 5, 10, 20. Finally, if you put n, the program will stop. For each integer, we need to calculate the sum of its digits and print them. Finally, we print goodbye. This is an example. We enter 157. The sum of digits is 1 plus 5 plus 7, which is 13. The next number is 99. The sum of digits is 18. 5, the sum of digits is 5. 438. It's 4 plus 3 plus 8. It's 15. And when AND is entered, the outer loop stops and says goodbye. This is what we need, sum of digits calculator. New class called sum of digits calculator. Okay. I will put the main method here and I'll have something like well true. I read string input, I'll read the input as a scanner dot next line. Scanner dot next line. I read text because it might, the next line might hold either a number or a text. I'm not sure what it holds. So I read the text and if the text is end, I will break from the loop. I will stop the loop and I will print goodbye at the end. Here I will do I'll process the input. See what happened. I created a whoop which reads a one. If it reaches end, it stops and then processes the read input. Finally, it says goodbye. 
this is a portion from the problem. We have, for example, we enter 1, 2, 5. We need to process this input to calculate the number, uh, the sum of its digits and print them. Then I enter uh, hello, it proce should process hello. Then I enter 5372, it should process this. Finally, I enter end and it stops the loop and says goodbye. Now I need to change this with the real logic to calculate sum of digits in sum of digits as zero. I need to have the number and num equals to integer dot parse int of this input. So I read the next line. If it is the command end, I stop. Otherwise, it should be a number. I parse this number. For example, this might be this number, 157. I parse this number and I want to sum their digits. So I say, wow, well, uh, num is bigger than zero. Sum of digits is increased by the num percent n, the last digit of the number and num equals to num per, uh, divided to 10. I delete the last digits while num is bigger than zero. And I need to have mat.abs. I don't explain this in bigger details because we already have solved this problem in the previous lessons. Do you remember this? We had num sum of digits many times. We have solved this problem already. The idea is that we take the last digit, we sum it, and we delete the last digit. For example, if the number is 4, 5, 2, the last digit is 2, we'll sum it here, and the number will be divided by 10 as integer division, and it will become 45. Then it will become 4, then it will become 0, and the loop will stop. Okay? So finally, I print the sum of digits and I print the sum of digits. And I use math ABS because this algorithm doesn't work for negative values. So I need just to remove the minus if the value is negative. So I have the previous logic extended with this. This is the inner loop and this is the previous logic which already was tested and it works correctly. We played with them. It's very important that when you solve a little bit more complex problems, to solve them step by step, to divide them into sub-problems. The first problem is continuously reading a number until end is reached. This is the first problem. The next problem is for given number, calculate and print the number of its digits. For given number num, calculate and print the number of digits. This is a sub problem. So we have one problem, this one, and a nested problem inside it. In fact, we have two separate problems to solve and we need to combine them. And this is our solution. Run. It's better to write the code step by step, problem by problem, not hold all the code uh, from as one shot. Okay, if we have, for example, 134, it's 8. It's correct. If we have 55, it's 10. If we have 20, it's 2, the sum of digits. If we have end, it's goodbye. Works absolutely correctly. Let's check for negatives. Minus 45, it should be 9. 0, it should be 0. And minus 1, it should be 1. And end, it should be goodbye. Works correctly, so we are done with this problem. 
Let's see the solution I had in mind before the start of this lesson. While true, read the next one if it is sent break. Later, calculate the sum of digits like I have shown you and finally print goodbye. Here the calculation of the sum of digits is a little bit more interesting. Oh, I need to put this here because it's how to say a little bit more tricky uh, but generally it should be like this this is the loop which we use we start from the input number while it is bigger than zero we divide it by 10 and at each iteration we sum up the last digit to the current sum this is what we have uh, it's very interesting it's uh, these three lines this line two lines and this line are combined in the for loop here this for loop combines these lines so it's really interesting but we need to be careful with this code because it might be misleading but it's correct you can check it yourself so the concept is again very similar we have one loop inside it we have another loop which does some calculation we read the next one we check for break then we take the input number, we sum its digits, and we print the output. And we repeat this again and again until AND is reached. Let's go ahead. Uh, we don't have more new things for this lesson. Now it's your time to solve the problems. You have live exercises session. And I highly recommend that you go through the homework exercises and you solve them yourself you learn by coding please write code please try to solve these problems and finally if you have problems if you have difficulties watch my solutions i will show you my solutions after a while but first do your best to solve these problems yourself then you may watch my video just to check your solutions with my solution and think about which is better you may come up with a better solution than me and this is obvious because uh, different people think differently so some solutions might be more easy and obvious for you some can be more obvious for me some are easier to understand and shorter and more smart some are not so give some time and on practice try to solve the homeworks and i will be back after a while to show you my solutions now it's time to show you my solutions for the practical problems which you had as assignment to work on so let's start with the first problem which is called building it's about writing a program to print a table representing a building like it is shown below so the odd floors hold apartments which are numbered like this a 10 a 11 a 12 etc they start with the letter a and they have uh, two other uh, digits i will explain later so even floors hold offices in a similar fashion and the last floor holds large apartments which are L60, L61, L62, etc. Uh, you will see the example. So the identifiers consist of type, which may be A apartment, O office, or L uh, large apartment, followed by the floor number, followed by, by the um, office number or apartment or or yes office or apartment number so we have a like the type 4 for example for 7 
and apartment number for example 12 it may be a712 so this is concatenated and this is an example so if we have four fours here and it's for one for two for three four four and we have one two three four five six apartments per four uh, at the ground floor we have apartments at the next floor we have offices it's odd for for one it's odd so it holds apartments uh, the next second floor it's even it holds offices office two zero two one etc 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 and the next four is apartments the next is offices and the final last four it's l large offices so your goal is to print a table like this for given number of fours fours for example fours here are four and given number of um, properties Per, per four which is here six so if we have four and six the output will be this one okay so this is an example mm, as input we take the count of fours and count of estates per four and the output is the building plan rectangular temp table of estates this is an example six four six fours and four uh, estates per four this is the output uh, okay, so let's solve this problem building. I'll open my nested loops, okay? Uh, here, my nested loops project in the IntelliJ idea, and I'll create a new class called building table, for example, or table of building. So the main method will hold my scanner then uh, and it's it's something in the clipboard my scanner then it will uh, hold something like uh, int force equals to scanner dot next next int later in uh, estates per four it goes to scanner dot next end and we'll have a for loop which will start from four four one until four reaches the fours num count and inside this loop we'll have another loop which will be for the estate from zero until the estates per four minus one see the estates here are six so this is from zero uh, are four this is from zero until three from zero until this this number minus one Okay, and inside I'll check that if we should check for last for if uh, I can do something like string uh, type equals to apartment, but if the Oh, it's not four shift x six. It should be four. Sorry. Okay. If the four percent two is zero, this is even four. Then the type should be office. Odd is apartment. Even is office. It's all even for 
vor. Mhm. Office. Apartment. And if the floor is equal to number of floors, I will uh, rename this number of floors. If it is equal to number of floors, so this is the last floor. The type should be L which is the last for large apartment L office O and apartment A okay so now we have the why this is under I don't know why it is under uh, under underlined okay so next I just need to print the type plus the four plus the estate number and after that print one space and once we pass through all the states of the floor we need to print an empty line i believe i'm ready with this problem so let's check whether it is correct or not six four it should be let's see if it is 64 from a10 to l60 oh this is not the correct one because the last four is in fact haha <laughs> it is not like this the last four is for one so I think we should start from the number of fours until one in the down direction. So, because we will first print the last four, then this four, then this four, and this will fix the bug I have. 6, 4, L60 to L63, L60 to L63, A50, O40 to 43, A30, 20, A10, and 20, O20, A10 looks absolutely correct. So I believe I'm ready with this problem. And let's see the solution I had in mind before the start of this lesson I read the, the floors and the rooms per floor I create a for loop starting from the floors until one the outer loops which iterates through the floors then the inner loop iterates through the rooms and I check if the floor if we are at the last floor we print L and the floor and the room number if we have even four, otherwise this is else if, we'll print the office. Finally, otherwise we'll print apartment. And this is very simple, I believe. And we print a new line after we print all the rooms from the current four. So we generally print the table uh, one by one and at each line we print column by column the outer loop goes through the table lines table rows the floors and the inner loop iterates through the rooms which are the columns inside the um, columns inside our um, 
for the columns in the table, in the output table. Okay, so we are ready for the next problem, which is called stupid password. Write a program to generate all possible passwords consisting of the following three parts. The first, first part is even number in the range two, between 2 and n, even number. The second is odd number in the range from 1 to n. And the third is product of the first two. Hmm. Really stupid passwords. This is an example. 4, 3, 1, 2. 4 is even number. This is odd number and this is uh, 12, which is, is the product of the previous two numbers. So this is um, what we get as input. We take as input the number n and the output should hold all possible passwords from the first to the last. These are the passwords. We have 1, 1. Uh, no, we have 11. So we have... Uh, this 2 1 this is uh, odd number uh, even number from 2 to n this is odd number and this is the product we have 2 3 and 6 we have 2 5 and 10 etc and finally at the end we have 10 we have 11 and the product 110 Okay, so let's check, uh, this is for 5, let's solve these stupid passwords uh, assignment. Let's create a new class called stupid passwords generator, because what is this? This is a generator of stupid passwords. So it answers very well on the question, what's this? What's this class? I'll put the main method. I'll take the scanner and this from the previous one, from the previous problem, and this is n. So I read the input data, and I'll need a for loop from one. Let's go back to the uh, problem statement. Even numbers in the range from 2 to n. Even number from 2 until n with i plus equals 2 because it should go through uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, etc. 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 Okay, so this should be named better. First num. Later, we'll have, I can copy this, uh, second number from 1 to n with step 2 because it's odd number from 1 to n. It is again with step 2. It should be 1, 3, 5, 7. Okay. And finally, Wong multiplication equals to first num multiplied by second num and we print the first num uh, it should start with space otherwise if we say first num plus second num plus third uh, plus the multiplication of them this is a number plus number plus number the result will be a number right I'll, I'll show you. This is 5. 5. <laughs> it is 5, but it should be 2, 1, 2. It is 2 plus 1 plus 2. <laughs> so I need to have empty string plus this. The result will be string. Plus this, the result will be this string, and plus this, the result will be this. So these three numbers will be appended as text. Let's see again. Oh. Five. We have this two one two, and the final is 
for 520. Okay, and I need to print them on the same one. Plus space. I don't need this. Plus space. And maybe finally I need to go add the new one. Let's check again whether this works correctly. 5, 6 numbers and they work exactly the same like the others. And for 11 the numbers are this. Works absolutely correct. So we are happy to have solved this problem. So let's see the solution I had in mind before the start of this project. It's called stupid passwords. I have the even number from 2 to end with step 2. From 2 until end with step of 2. The nested loop is for the odd number from 1 until n with step 2 and inside I print using a formatting strings I print just three numbers first number then second number then third number then space and I repeat this many times in the nested loop so I print the even number the odd number and their product. Okay, so both solutions are correct and the difference is that we calculate this in a separate variable in my solution and also the way we print this is slightly different. But the algorithm is in fact the same. Okay, the next problem from your homework and exercises is called magic numbers. It's about finding all three digit magic numbers of order n and by definition a, a number is called magic of order n if the product of its digits is n for example if uh, if we have one the output should be this if we have three the output should be this and how we, we can interpret it this is uh, this consists of three uh, digits, first digit, second digit, third digit, and the the product of its digits it's n. So this is equal to one multiplied by one by one, which is one. This is one multiplied by one by three, which is three, and this three is the same like this three. So we enter this and we want to find all uh, sequences of three digits which means a number from 0 to 9 which when multiplied result in this number. Okay, so magic numbers. Let's see new class magic numbers generator will be the name of the class because it will generate mag magic number numbers and I'll take again these two ones because they are exactly the same like in the previous um, problem. So let's have the first digit. For the first digit d1 should be from 1 until n. It cannot be 0 because if it is 0, uh, this will not be 3 digit number. For example, if we have 1 to 3, this is 3 digits. But if we have 0 to 23, this is 23, which is 2 digit number. So it, sh it should start from 1. The second should start from the second digit should be from 0 until 10 9 sorry this is from 1 to 9 not to n and the second uh, the third d3 
uh, the third digit it should be okay the product of fifth digits it's and the third digit is from zero to nine okay and if d1 multiplied by d2 by d3 if the product of the digit is and then i print this number i'll use print f with this pattern percent t percent d percent t d1 d2 d3 let's see whether this works or not for three the output should be this I have three oh i don't have this new one here let's try again okay three sorry this was a mistake one one three one three one three one one works correct let's have six oh we have more combinations here these three multiplied this three multiplied and this three multiplied and this three multiplied result in six i can have if i have 12 there are lots of combinations if i have 21 i have but if i have some prime number like seven it should be only one and seven if i have a prime number like 19 it's empty if i have zero it still has some solutions all the numbers which hold zero okay so we are done with this problem and let's see the solution i had in mind before the start the first digit is a whoop from 1 to 9 the second digit is a whoop from 0 to 9 the third uh, nested whoop is from 0 to 9 and if we multiply these three digits and they are, have a value of n we print these three digits joined together one after another exactly the same solution which i wrote just now Travel savings, it's about writing a, a problem or writing a, a program which calculates the money collection from multiple travel destinations. I'll show you the example. So we read the destination and the budget. For example, I want to go to Bali and my budget is 5000. And many times I read the program should read some amounts of collected or saved money until the money are enough. So the idea is that uh, I want to go to Bali. Uh, sorry, to Bali, for example. It will cost, for example, 5,000. But I don't have 5,000. I save once 2,000. Then I save the next month 1050. Then I save 3000. And if I sum these numbers, there will be more than or equal to the budget I need to go to Bali. So the program will accept these values, will sum them. And when I'm ready, it will say, You are ready, please go to Bali. After that, it will read another destination, for example, Mexico, and Mexico might cost, for example, 4,000. And I again collect, collect, collect money, and when I'm the money are enough, I go to Mexico and I start from zero here. See the example. We print uh, after a while. We print collected sum, where the sum is the uh, sum which is collected until this moment, or going to destination, and we read another destination and budget after uh, all the money are collected. Finally, if the destination entered is 
end, this will end the program. So looks like we have two nested loops. First, we read the destination. We do something and we read another destination until we reach end. And for each destination, we collect money. I'll show you the example. So we enter Bali and the budget for Bali is 3,500 in this example. The first savings entered is 800. So we have collected 800 starting from zero for the Bali budget. Later, we collect or save more 1,800. So together we have this sum is 2,600. It's still less than the required budget 3,500. So we need to collect more money. At the next moment or at the next moment, we collect more 1,000. So we reach 3,600, which is enough to visit Bali according to our planned budget. So we are going to Bali. And so we have a whoop and this is an inner whoop. For the next destination, we enter Brazil. We want to go to Brazil. It's more expensive for 1,600. And we collect 5,000 and they are enough from the first shot. So we collected this and we are going to Brazil. Finally, we press end and it's enough. Did you have goodbye? No, we didn't have goodbye. So when we press end, this stops. So we have this, this, and this as the outer loop. And we have inner loop here and inner loop here. Because we enter destination and we collect multiple time, times money. We enter another destination and we collect multiple times money. We have another destination and we collect multiple times money. Finally, we print end and the outer whoops, whoop should stop. Okay, I will show you a solution. I'll write one now. It's called travel money. savings for example it's the problem about saving money for travel it's a good good enough name i'll another uh, again take this scanner from the previous problem the previous solution and now i'll do something like this wow true wow well, it's true i'll do the following string destination equals to scanner dot next line. I'll read the next line. If the destination is end, I'll break. Otherwise, here I will collect money and will enter the destination again. Okay, but for each destination, I enter double budget. The budget is something like table dot parse of scanner dot next one. I can't use scanner dot next double because it cannot be mixed with next line do you remember if you use next line you should use only next line you cannot mix with next into next double that's why i read the data like this so i have the budget and collected sum starts from zero 
and I say, wow, the collected sum is less than the budget. I will do what? I will collect money. Money or saved amount. And collected sum will be increased with the saved amount. And once the collected sum reaches the budgets or over uh, or becomes bigger than the budget, it should be done. It should be something like uh, going to and the destination. But before that, I'll print the collected money. Something like collected and the sum of the collected money until now. Okay. Hmm. Looks like it's correct, but I'm not sure. So this is the outer uh, loop, which holds an inner loop. Enter a destination. If it is sent, this should, should stop. We collect the money and after we have collected the money, we say going to the destination and we enter another destination. But the collect money collection process starts from money zero until it reaches the budget which is read at, for each destination. Let's just check whether this works correctly or not. But I started incorrect. I started this magic number generator. I need to start travel money saver. Okay. Let's see whether this works. I want to go to Bali. It will cost me 3000. Okay. I have 2000 this month. I have collected. I have 500 the next month. I have collected 2500. I have 700 the next month. I collected totally 3200. So I'm going to Bali. Going to Bali, I don't have this uh, exclamation mark. But I continue. I want to go to Mexico. It will cost me 5000. I have 2700 the first month. And I have 2300 the second month. So I collected exactly what I need, 5,000, and I go to Mexico. Oh, this should be printed with two. Uh, it should be like this, percent dot to F uh, slash N. And this should be print F, okay? Finally, I print end. And this will stop. Now with the fixes, let's see whether this works better than the previous one. I want to go to Sofia. It will take me 2000. I have 1,000, 1.5 thousands. I have collected 350.50. Okay. And now I collected more 250. Now I have enough money to go to Sofia. I start from zero. I want to go to London. It will take me 500. Depends on where I live, of course. I have 2000. And this is enough to go to London. And it works. If I start from end at the beginning, it will directly stop the program. So I have solved correctly this program. Let's see what happens here. Ha! Wow, not destination, which is, please read the next one. Check whether it's end 
and if it's not do this whoop this is a kind of short shorter way to implement these three lines i'll show you i'll need this and wow this is not equal to n do the following but this will not work first because this is not correct i should say equals n and i should say the opposite okay but i cannot declare this here so i need to declare it separately and say yes but it should be like this scanner dot next one okay so please read the next one take the result check whether it's end wow it's not end the next one please do this it's a uh, more hacker style uh, way to implement this but it's correct and you may see it in your practice because it's very popular in the Java world to have this combination of reading the next value and checking it for some some other value I'll try again I want to go to Pali it will cost me 3000 I have to, to 1500 I have more 499 I have 0 0.5 <laughs> and I have 0 0.5 and finally I reach 3000 and I'm going to Bali I want to go to Sofia it will cost 1000 I have 1200 it's enough I'm going to Sofia and goodbye exactly the same way it runs but we use this construction so we read the needed sum we start from collected sum zero and while the collected sum is less than the needed sum we take the next one and add the money the saved money and we print how many money we have collected after we have collected all the money for a certain destination we print we are going to this destination and that's all the next number is called prime, uh, the next problem is called prime numbers it's about writing a program to print all prime numbers in given range so we have given a range for example from 5 to 50 these are the prime numbers in this range 5 7 11 13 all these are prime numbers so we need to have a whoop from start number until the end number and inside the loop if num is prime then print the number this is not a code this is loop for num equals to this range okay but this is the idea that we can use just have a loop and for each number within the range check whether it's prime or not if the range is 20 to 30 this is 23 and 29 is the result okay so let's create a new class called prime numbers in range it's good enough as a name what does this class it finds the prime numbers in given range so this answers the question i will again take this scanner and from the scanner i will read in start number equals to scanner dot ne next int int and number equals to scanner dot next int and i'll have four whoop for number is from start number until 
and number and now print the number and this now this will print all the numbers from for example 50 to 100 but I need to print only the prime numbers so I will change this a little bit boolean is prime is true each number is prime until proven the opposite I will need a for loop for the divider divider which will start from 2 until the math dot s square t of num why because if we have a divider if the number num is equal a multiplied by b it will be for sure that a is less than or equal to square of num or b will be less than or equal to the square root of num if both are less than this the multiplication will not be true so we have already solved this problem how to check whether a number is prime a number is prime if it doesn't have uh, divisors it can be divided only by one and by itself it doesn't have dividers which are in the range from 2 until the uh, up to square root of num. So if the divider divides num, if we have a divider, some divider, for example, 5, which divides num, this means that is prime is false and we don't need to continue this loop so we can break otherwise after the loop if the number is still prime we print it and that's the entire solution okay so we have a loop from the start number until the end number for each number, we assume the number is prime. We try to find dividers, 2, 3, 4, 5, until the square root of num. For example, if num is 100, the square root of num will be 10. So we'll try 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 9, and 10. And if this divider divides num without a reminder, this means that this number is not prime by definition so we stop the loop and we skip printing this because this will be false otherwise if this loop checks all possible dividers and none of them divides num then num will be prime this will be true and it will be printed let's check whether it works correctly from one to 20 works correctly but it's one is not prime so uh, if we start from minus 10 to 20 these numbers are not prime so I need the prime is prime I need another if if it should start from max math dot max of two and start num the bigger of two and start number it should start from two if the number is not enough so if we start from minus 10 until 20 
these are the prime numbers. By definition, a, a number which is less than 2 cannot be prime. The smallest prime number is 2. Negative numbers cannot be prime by definition from the math. Okay? If we start from 100 until 200, these are the prime numbers. And this works correctly. If we have from 20 to 30, these are the prime numbers. This works completely well if from 20 to minus 20. This is an empty range. There are no prime numbers. From 25 until 25, there are no prime numbers because there is only one number here, 25, which is composite. 5 multiplied by 5 is 25. That's not prime. Okay? So, this is the solution and we can go ahead. This is the solution I had in mind before the start of the lesson. We have start and end. We make a loop from start to end. And we assume the prime. And we start from divider 2. Aha! We... Okay. We start from divider 2 and we have max divider which is uh, at square root of num. And while the divider is less than max divider, if the divider divides num, it's not prime, we break. Otherwise, we increase the divider. This might be done with a for loop from, from 2 until the... Uh, from 2 until math.s squared t of num. So, this inner loop might be different but this works also very well and finally if the current number is prime we print it and we go after that for the next number for example if the current number is 5 the next here will be 6 and this logic will repeat for 6 we are done with this problem so let's go ahead with the next one the next one is called unique pin codes. It's about generating unique pin codes, which consists of uh, three uh, of three digits. Okay, the first is in the range one to max one. The second is in the range one to max two, and the third is in the range one to max three. The first and the third should be even, and the second should be a prime number. But if it is a digit, it's from 0 to 9, okay? Because it's digit, single digit. What are the prime numbers in this range? It's, they are 2 or 3 or 5 or 7. There are no other numbers which are single digits and prime in the same time. So, we need to have one number, d1, followed by a second number, d2, followed by a third number, d3, and this and this should be even, even, and this should be even. And this d2 should be one of these numbers. So we need to have three nested loops from 1 to max 1, from 1 to max 2 and from 1 to max 3. And we need to check whether the first is even, the second is 2, 3, 5 or 7 and the final d3 is even number. Okay, so we print, we want to print the pin codes in an increased order. If we have 355, five, this digit starts from 1 to 3 and it should be even, which the only possibility is 2. The final digit is 2 or 4 because it should be in the range up to 5. And the second is in the range up to 5, so it should be either 2 or 3 or 5. So these are the 
this is the output and this is the explanation. Okay, let's solve this problem and I'll create a new Java class. Unique pin codes. Unique pin codes generator. I'll create a unique pin codes generator which will hold my main method. It will have something like this, but I'll need max1, max2, and max3. And I'll need a for i, which starts from, it should be even. So it should start from, uh, it should be digit 1 from 2 until, from 2, until max1 with step 2. Okay. The second should be the second di digit d2. It should start from 2 until inclusively max2 and if d2 is 2 or d2 is 3 or the second digit is 5 or the second digit is 7, 10, it's even, is prime, sorry. Finally, I'll need another for loop, which is the last digit, d3, which starts from 2 until max 3, this is max 2, with plus equal to. Okay, this is d1. The first loop from 2, from 2 until max 1, with step 2, which means even numbers. The second from 2 until max 2, and then we check for 2, 3, 5, or 7. So we have d2, which is prime. The third one from 2 to max 3, with step 2. And finally, we need to print these digits together. We have empty string, then we append the first digit to this string, then the second digit to this string, then the first digit to this string, and we are ready. Let's test whether this works correctly. 355 should print 6. Uh, pin codes as output 355 five. we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 works correctly I can check also 999 these are all possible unique pin codes within this range and this should not be bigger than 9 because we know that these d1, d2, and d3 are digits, so they should be in the range from 0 to 9, because that's how digits work. Okay, so we are ready with this problem, and we can go ahead. This is the way we solve this. d1 from 2 to max 1 with step 2, d2 from 2 to max 2 with if, and D3 is in this range and we can check for D2 like this and print. It's very similar to what I had in mind and what I already implemented for you a few minutes ago. The next problem is called letters combinations. Okay, We want to write a program which generates all three letter combinations under the certain condition. We have a start letter, end letter, and excluded letter. We want to print all combinations in the range from start to the end, excluding x, and finally print their count. For example, the start letter uh, 
might be, for example, sorry, but it might be, uh, for example, C. Okay, might be C. The end letter might be, for example, F. So we have these letters in the range. Uh, C, sorry, C, D, E, F. And we have, ah, sorry, 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 sorry. So we have from C until F, excluding, for example, D. So we have C, D, E, F, but without D, because it's included. So this is the start letter, this is the end letter, and this D is excluded letter. And we have this letter C, E, F. And we want to have three letters combinations. For example, C, C, C. Another example is E, C, F. Or C, F, F. These are all valid combinations of three letters among this set. Okay? This is an example. If we have from A to C but without B, this means that using only the letters A and C, print me all combinations of three letters. And they are totally eight. This is the count of these combinations. How many are they in total? Okay, so I will create a new project. And a new Java class letters combinations three letters combinations okay and I will put the main method and we'll take this because this will help me to save some time so I have char letter one the first letter which will be next I don't have next char so I'll have the next one but I'll take the uh, the first letter of it because next one will return string for example Peter or hello but I take the first letter for example P or H okay so I have a start letter, then end letter, and then excluded letter. And I'll have a for loop letter starting from star start letter until letter reaches the end letter. Okay. Oh, but it's not letter. It should be L one because this is the first letter, and I'll have inside if the first letter is not the excluded letter, then I'll have second letter L2 from the start to the end and again if L2 is not the excluded letter I'll have a for loop for L3 okay and again if L3 is not the excluded letter then I'll print these three letters the em empty string append the first letter append the second letter append the third letter okay then append empty space 
and increment the counter which will start from zero at the beginning and counter is zero and finally after all these whoops which end here we can check after all these whoops we print the counter which starts from zero it should be something like this we iterate from start letter until end letter running excluding the excluded letter then for l3 do the same for l3 the same and inside we print all of this let's see whether this works correctly or not please print all letters starting from a until c excluding p Ha! Ah, this doesn't work well why because this is int it should be char it should be character it should be character it works correctly but this print a 97 it is a 98 is c is p or i'm not sure but let's check i want all letters from a to c without b i have b here why because this is not checked correctly i should check l1 l2 and l3 for the excluded letter let's check again a to c without b oh works absolutely correctly <laughs> I can optimize this a little bit. I will optimize this for code size, but we'll see. I just combine the checks on a single check. And this. I can do like this. I just use, oh, this is incorrectly, Shift F6 with double T, not triple T. I run the first loop from start letter to the end letter, the second loop from start letter to the end letter, the third loop from, from the start letter to the end letter, and then I check all of these three letters whether they are different than the excluded letter and I print if it is true. Let's run this and check whether A to C without B. Okay. Looks that this works correctly and let's have another example from A to Z without x oh a lot of combinations are out there 15,000 okay let's go ahead with the next with the solution i had in mind start at x i have three nested loops and i check whether the first second and the third are different than the excluded letter and i print and include increase the counter finally i print the counter exactly the same solution which I already had in mind okay the next problem is called happy numbers it's about writing a program to generate all four digit happy numbers d1 d2 d3 d4 for given integer n such that the first two digits their sum is equal to the second two digits which are equal to n so this is an example if we have three we may have the first two digits one plus two this is three zero plus three this is also three okay so 
this two should be equal to this two should be equal to this. So if we have a loop for the first digit, it should be from 1 to 9 because it cannot be 0. Otherwise, it will be not 4 digit number, it will be 3 digit number. Later, we have this. It should be from 0 to 9. Okay. The next should also be from 0 to 9 and the next should also be from 0 to 9 and then I can have some checks here for these digits. This is another example. Let's solve this. It's very easy. It needs four nested loops, but it's very easy. Happy numbers. Okay, I'll create the main method. Then I'll take this number and maybe from this the number n and I'll have a for, for loop from digit 1 from 1 until 9 10 for the second digit from 0 until 9 and now if d1 plus d2 equals n I, I can continue if I don't even need these brackets because I have single statement after each for or if if I have this I will continue otherwise I don't need to, to um, iterate for the other whoops because it's meaningful so I'll have the other two d3 from one uh, from sorry from zero to nine the, the third digit it is d3 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 and d4 is from zero until nine and if d3 plus d4 equals n then I need to print what I need to print the number and spaces so I will print I don't mean this okay I will print something like empty plus d1 plus d2 plus the third digit plus, plus the, the fourth digit was some space. I think that's all. And hmm, maybe I need to put the code like this to be more readable. But let's check whether this works. For three, I should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. For ah. Uh, Let's check. I have this here, which is not needed. So this corresponds to this. It's correct. Now the brackets are closed correctly. And I'll try again. For 3, I need to have 12 happy numbers. Okay. Uh, it should be print without ln. Let's try again. For 3, I should have 12 happy numbers 12 happy numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 10 11 12 this is 3 this is 3 this is 3 this is 3 okay if i have 12 there are quite more works correctly so we are done with this project with this problem it is exactly the same solution the first digit is from 1 to 9 it cannot be 0 because it's the starting digit the others can be from 0 to 9 i check the first two digits then i try the next in the nested to the third and the fourth digit and i check whether they are correct and finally i print the result 
the next happy number if I have it. So this is very similar to my solution. Okay, this was the last problem from your exercises and homeworks. So let's summarize what we have learned today in this lesson. Uh, we learned that for loops can use different steps like step of two, i plus equal two, or the step might can be that we multiply the current number two by two and take and that we get the next number or we can even multiply the current number by itself so this will generate something like two then uh, or for example three then nine then 81 etc if i starts from three which is very interesting. So we may have any formula which transforms certain number to the next number in the loop. Uh, okay. In Later we will learn today that we can nest loops one inside another. We can have a, uh, we can repeat a piece of code which also holds something which repeats a piece of code. We can iterate through all the rows in a table and for each row we can iterate through all the columns in the current row. For example, nested loops are used when we process tabular data. Process data by rows and each row is processed by columns. Nested loops while loops can be used when we have repeating logic with nested repeating logic with some exit conditions like we read numbers until we reach end and for each number we do something which requires a nested loop so it is easy to understand the concept behind the nested loops it's more complex to solve the problems which we may uh, solve using nested loops because they require combining loops with nesting loops with if with complex if statements uh, with variables expressions everything we have learned until today from our training course is combined as knowledge as skills in the current lesson so if you are very good in the current lesson this assumes that you know very well the entire training course and the most complex problems at the exam from this uh, training course will come from this lesson. So be sure that if you want to become a skillful software engineer that you learn how to use nested loops combined with some ifs and more complex logic in order to solve problems like the examples we had today. Did you like this code lesson? Do you want more? Join the learners community at softunit.org Subscribe to my YouTube channel to get more free videos, tutorials on computer programming, Java, software engineering and many others. Get free access to the practical coding exercises and the automated judge system for these code lessons to uh, evaluate your code from the exercises you write. Get help from the mentors and meet other learners. We, uh, we will answer your questions. And it's all free, completely free. So join now.